This is lesson 2.1, Inductive Reasoning and Conjecture. Your objectives are to make conjectures based on inductive reasoning and to find counterexamples. Inductive reasoning is a reasoning that uses information from different examples to form a conclusion or a statement called a conjecture. It's just a guess. You use the information you have and you make a guess based on that information. Write a conjecture that describes the pattern in each sequence. Then use your conjecture to find the next item in the sequence. When you do series of numbers, look for patterns that are multiplied or added and see which one fits. From negative 5 to 10, and then to negative 20, and then to 40, you're multiplying by negative 2 each time. So that means that what comes next would be negative 80. Number 2, 1, 10, 100, 1,000. You might check addition here. From 1 to 10, you add 9. From 10 to 100, you add 90. From 100 to 1,000, you add 900. That's not the same. But if you try multiplication, you're multiplying by 10 each time. And if you're multiplying by 10, the next number would be 10,000. Number 3, from 1 to 6 fifths to 7 fifths to 8 fifths, well, the numerator is increasing each time. Also, remembering that 1 is a 5 fifths, this is adding 1 fifth. So, 8 fifths plus 1 fifth would be 9 fifths for the next term. Check addition or multiplication for your pattern. See which one fits. And the one that fits will be the one that follows that pattern the same each step. Write a conjecture about each value or geometric relationship. Number four, you're given three points. If I were to plot those points, I would actually see that they form a line if you connect them. So my conjecture will be that A, B, and C are collinear. You could also say that A, B, and C are coplanar. You could say that A, B, and C are on the same line. You might even say that A, B, and C form the vertices of a triangle. And that would be incorrect, but it's still a conjecture. Conjectures can be false, but it would still be a, a good conjecture that's related to the situation. Number five, angle one and angle two form a right angle. Well. If angles form a right angle, then they're complementary. So I'll make the conjecture that angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. You might also say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. You might say angle 1 and angle 2 are adjacent. You might say angle 1 and angle 2 share a vertex. There are lots of conjectures you can make, lots of correct answers. And the conjectures may or may not be true as long as they're directly related to the situation. Number six, angle ABC and angle DBE are vertical angles. Well, there's lots of things you can say about vertical angles. What I'm going to say is that angle ABC and angle DBE are acute angles. You might make the conjecture that they're congruent angles or that they're right angles. Just make sure that whatever your conjecture is, is that it's related to the pieces that they give you. Don't create a new piece and say, angle one is obtuse, because we don't have angle one in this situation. So don't add other irrelevant information to the story. Number seven, angle E and angle F are right angles. Well. If they're right angles, 
then they both have a measure of 90. So I make the conjecture that angle E is congruent to angle F. You might also say that since they're both right angles, that they add up to 180. So you could say that the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F equals 180. You might also say that angle E and angle F are supplementary. Lots of different conjectures you can make. Find counterexamples. A conjecture is false if there is even one situation in which the conjecture is not true. The false example is called a counterexample. Your conjecture could be true a million ways, and if it's false just one way, then the whole conjecture is false. And whatever that one way is that it's false, that's the counterexample. Determine whether each conjecture is true or false. Give a counterexample for any false conjecture. Number one, if points A, B, and C are collinear, then AB plus BC equals AC. Well, that's certainly possible if B is in the middle. The parts add up to equal the whole thing. But nothing says that B has to be in the middle. What if A was in the middle? If I gave some segment measures and I said AB is 4, AC is 7, and that means that BC has to be 11, does it work now? Does 4 plus 11 equal 7? No, it does not. So there's our counterexample. This conjecture is false. Number two. If angle R and angle S are supplementary, and angle R and angle T are supplementary, then angle T and angle S are congruent. Well, supplementary angles add up to 180. So let's try an example here. If the measure of angle R is 100, then that means the measure of angle S has to be 80, since those two are supplementary. And the measure of angle T is also 80, because angle R and angle T are supplementary. So I can reason there that no matter what angle R is, since angle S and angle T have to be the part that adds up to 180, then angle S will always be congruent with angle T. This conjecture is true. Number three, if angle ABC and angle DEF are supplementary, then angle ABC and angle DEF form a linear pair. Well, I can see how two supplementary angles would form a linear pair, but is it possible to show how they wouldn't? What about this? What if there's the two angles? Angle ABC has a measure of 50. Angle DEF has a measure of 130. Those are definitely supplementary because they add up to 180, but they're not together to form a linear pair. So there's a counterexample. This conjecture is false. Number four. If segment DE is perpendicular to segment EF, then angle DEF is a right angle. Well, I can draw that. There's segment DE, and it's perpendicular to segment EF by creating a right angle. But remember, perpendicular lines form four right angles. So is it possible for that to happen where angle DEF is not a right angle? And there's just no way. It will always be true. So remember, the conjecture you make is just a guess about the situation. Make sure that your conjecture is related to the situation. Don't be given a situation about two angles and then say that a circle has a radius of four. Make sure that it relates to the situation. It can be a true or false conjecture, but it still needs to relate to the situation that they give you. 
If there is a counterexample to show that the conjecture is false, then the conjecture is completely false. Even if it's true a hundred times and it's false one time with that one counterexample, then the conjecture will be false.